Hi, it's Rosemary, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this Haunted House music box. Uh, all of you should have picked up your kits at the library, and I asked you to have a few items in front of you. You will need a water bowl. Uh, you will need a palette. Uh, it could be either a palette or a tile or a piece of foil if you don't have any of those. And uh, the brushes. Uh, I gave you a dry brushing brush with this kit, but you have brushes from your other classes that you can base coat this with. with base coat this with. Um, I went ahead and I painted the black on this entire piece so you didn't have to sit here and watch me paint black. So um, you can pause it and you could put your black on. Let me just give you a couple of tips now. I want you to paint the inside as much as you can. It's a little difficult, but as much as you can so that when you look through the windows, you can see just black and you don't see the white showing. So you're not gonna be able to get all the way up, um, okay? And I kind of started this because I wanted you to see uh, different ways of it being done or different steps that it's at. Uh, okay, so get your dry brushing brush. We're gonna start with the turquoise. You put a little, little, little bit of paint in your brush. I have to work out the previous color that I have in my brush. And this is how you do it. You use the next color that you're going to use to work out the previous color. And I had been doing some of the dry brushing, so I, I ended with red and I had a little bit of red in the brush. But you see, when I first started out, it was very red. And then each application that you put into the brush and you wipe it out, you get the next color to show. You do not want a wet brush. The only thing is I used it all. So I'll put a little bit more in there. Okay. Now, Dry brushing is exactly what it says. You put a little bit in your brush and you take all of it out until it starts to dry brush the paper towel that you see it's skipping the little holes in the paper towel. And I always hold it with my hand and I work the color out all sides, twist it and turn it. Okay, you can always go put more in your brush, but if you get a big blob, you have to start back with the black again. Now, when you're on a flat surface, it's a little bit more difficult to put the uh, color on. So I don't pounce straight down, I kind of pounce with the side of my brush. And I twist and I use all different sides of the brush, just keep twisting the brush around. Use one side. Then use the other side. Now the first coat is going to look like there's not enough color. And the big mistake that a lot of people make is they try to achieve the final color with the first application. Then you're painting it on. That's your prerogative, but then it defeats the purpose of putting the black underneath. So now you should do the whole house, which um, I wanna show you what I did here. This is two coats. Now you can do as many coats as you want. And each coat that you do, and it's in the same, uh, you do it the same way. You kind of pounce with a little bit of a pull. You pounce and a little pull. Just pounce it like that. Don't pounce straight on. Put your brush on a little bit of an angle. Use the sides of the hairs of the brush. Twist it around and blend it. Now you could see on, where did I start? Over here, how much lighter that is. Now I'll go over that a second time. Again, take the paint out of the brush. And you'll see a big difference in the second coat. But if you do it too fast and if it's too wet, it starts lifting and you'll just see a blob of black showing there. So always make sure that it's dry. Okay, but you see the difference in the second coat? And again, you could do it three coats and you could do it as many times as you want to achieve the color that you want. Okay, so I'll, I'll keep working on this side so you can watch me doing it. And while I'm doing this, um, I know I gave, last time I gave all of you my email address. So if you have any questions when you're working on this, please feel free. It's roecer at gmail.com. You can get in touch with me. And I'd like to hear any um, suggestions that you have or any complaints, which I'd rather not hear them. But, you know, if you have any complaints, that's the only way I learn. Okay, but you see the difference in the second coat? It makes such, such a difference. Also, too, I found out something interesting, which I didn't know. Um, my daughter-in-law subscribed to my page on YouTube. And I, and I said, to, and I got a notice, and I, I called her, and I said, you know, what is that about? What, why do you do that? She said, because anytime you post a video, I will get an email, I will get a notice. 
And I said, does it cost anything? And she said, no. So if you go to my page and you see the word subscribe, you can subscribe. And then whenever I post these videos, you'll see them. Um, I will be putting this video up as soon as I'm finished with it. And I try to keep it kind of simple. And my other videos were painting a ceramic pickup truck, painting a ceramic birdhouse. So this will be painting a ceramic haunted house music box. A little long, but I'll keep that same painting A you know, for my channel, so this way you'll know what to look for, okay? You don't have to do in the windows, but I did outside the windows with the turquoise. And you see, I kind of back up and blend, and it's all with the sides. See how the flat, my brush is flattening out on that side? That's why I constantly turn my brush. And again and the second coat makes a big difference. See the second coat, how much darker it is. But it's always pounce. And you don't have to worry about where the red is gonna go because the red will color the turquoise. These are all opaque acrylics and one color should cover another. And I see now I'm lifting a little bit so I know that that spot is wet. So I'm just gonna go away from it, let it dry, and then go back later and pounce it. Okay, right now it's not covering because it's wet. That's why you'll be working on the whole house. So by the time you finish the first side, the second side, the third and the fourth, you'll go back to where you started. It should be dry enough that you can go right over it. Okay, and that's how it came out. All right, now, when you um, go to your next color, you switch colors, don't put your brush in water unless you wanna wait a couple of hours for it to dry, okay? So I just pick up the turquoise in the brush and wipe out. I mean the uh, purple in the brush and wipe out the turquoise. And you see how fast it came out? I might need a drop more. You use very little color when you do dry brushing. Okay, again, I'll do it a second time. Now, when you dry brush, when there's crevices, it's so much easier, so much easier. You have these crevices in the roof. So what I do is turn it upside down and don't work up in the air because you have no balance and nowhere to brace it. Keep it down and go up from the bottom and skip the crevices. See what I'm doing? You're just kind of feathering it. You can't see what I'm doing, but I'll work looking at the screen. Oops. I forgot to unplug the phone. Okay, and that's what you do on the roof. And you, one brush load will do the whole roof. And then do the roof on the window, the dormer window. Same way, up from the bottom. One brush load, you see what I'm doing with one brush load? Sorry about that. Okay, so now that's just one coat, and you could see on the finished one how much sharper the color is. So you need to do your colors twice. Again, very, very, very little paint. I'm only putting the paint on the tips of the hairs of the brush, wiping it all out, and I'm going to do it a second time now. And you see the difference in the color the second time and a third time. Sometimes you want to do it a third time. And it's your piece, like I said, and you can do as many coats as you want, but always do it in this dry brush way because if you don't, you have a painted look and it makes such a big difference with this technique. Okay. One brush load does that whole side of the roof and the dormer. Now I just want to show you how to do the edges also. The same way, put a little bit of paint in the brush, take it out. And over here, we're gonna do more like a pouncing because it's just like the flat of the house. There's no crevices. So I'm pouncing it across. And then just feather it in to get as close to the turquoise as you can. I don't like a painted line in there, so I like the feathered look on the end. I do that by pouncing. You see that? Just pounce it in there. Okay, and then you could even do it a third time if you wanted to make it even sharper. See that? That's a third time. But it's a good idea to let it dry in between coats. And I come up from the bottom. 
with the roof, no matter where it is, on the dormer or on the house, okay? So over here, you're pouncing, and then just kind of pounce the edge a little to blend it with the rest of the roof, okay? There you go, there you go. Okay, so now we'll go to the red. Now, I did purple also on the top of the chimney, the roof, and, oh, on the base. Let's, while we have purple in the brush, let's put a little bit in here. Put this over here. And, okay, on the base, it has this rounded area here. I start there because I know I'm going to have more in my brush, and I don't care if that's a little more solid. Again, it's the flat side of the brush, not point up, not straight down. It's pounced. And if you do it properly, you kind of skip the black in the crevice there. All right? And then you feather it when you have less in the brush. Before you dip for more paint, feather it up and feather it down if you want a little bit more coming down. You can go down as far as you'd like. See how it's feathered down? And then again, if you do that a second time, it'll make the purple a lot deeper. Okay, now there's one coat and there's two coats. So like I said, you do it as many times as you want and then you feather it. When there's less in the brush, right before you go to dip for more paint, because you really don't want a lot of paint when you're feathering it down. And feathering it down just means just go back onto that rounded area and just flip your brush. And that pulls some of it down in a feathered effect. So this way you get a, you know, an uneven edge. And then come up. Okay, and then one thing I didn't tell you to have is a pencil. And what I did here is I took the pencil and I drew the word boo in. And then I took a, a smaller brush and make sure there's enough paint in the brush. It doesn't have to be thin lines. As thick as it comes, it doesn't matter. And paint the word boo in if that's what you want. And then um, I went back in and I did purple in an arch inside the two O's. And then with the back end of the brush, you can do a black dot when that dries, but make sure it's all dry, okay? So now let's go on to the red in the house. And again, the same thing. You pick up a little bit of red, no water. Don't use the water. The only reason I told you to have water is when you do the black, you could wash your brush, okay? And you see how fast I went from the purple to the red? I didn't even have to do it that many times. I'll do it twice to get a brighter red, okay? And now when you do the red, I started here. It's the same thing. I'm going to turn the piece. You're going to do it from top and bottom. So you can go down, put your brush flat, and then come up from the bottom. Very simple. Okay? And I would do it twice also. And when you do the door, it's just a little bit of pouncing on the door. And then what else did I do? I think that's about it. That's about what I did on there. Oh, the, and then the... Um, here and then I'll do it a second time because like I said you should do everything at least twice because that really gives you more vibrant color let's do it here see now oh, let's do it over here this is where I did one coat see that see the difference with the second coat and then pounce it on the door because when it's on a flat surface I pounce more and when it's on a crevice surface, I go against the grain. So if your grain is going this way, you want to go the opposite way of the grain. Okay? You don't go th with the grain because then you're going into the crevices. And you want your crevices to remain the darker color no matter what you're doing. Okay? And then we got the base. And what I'll do here is I'll go back in. I, I did this one in purple and this one in the teal. So you can do whatever you want. You can do it in the red. And so because I did the opposite, I have uh, purple eyes on this one. We're going to do turquoise eyes on this one. And I'm just going to do like a little half moon. Actually, you can just pretty much fill the whole thing in. I think that's easier. Like a little teardrop shape. Fill that in. Leave a little black showing underneath. You could fill the whole thing in if you wanted to also. Did 
that. And then with your black, I'm just gonna work right out of the cap. Take the back end of your brush, whichever brush you wanna use, it's bigger, I use a bigger one. And of course this is wet, so I don't know if this is gonna work. There you go. Back into the brush, the handle of the brush. You want it bigger, you circle it. There you go. Okay. All right, so it's a pretty simple piece. I put some glitter on um, the roof, all the purple areas, and a little bit on the edge of the base and on the boo, I put the glitter. And I didn't do it on the turquoise part of the house, but I did it on the red. But, you know, you can do it wherever you'd like to do it. And you put glitter on by just a thin coat. I use a very thin coat. It's um, glue and glitter together. I think I labeled them for you so you know what the glitter is. Oh, maybe I didn't label it, but it's the only white that you have. And um, you just paint a very thin coat on. You don't want to overpower it with the glitter. And if you put too much on, it might stay a little cloudy looking also. So put a very thin coat of the glitter on. All right, now I'm gonna kind of walk you through putting this music box in. Okay. Clean up this mess over here. All right, so glue gun is the best, but you have to work fast with the glue gun. You put glue on the piece, just don't get it on the thread, okay? And ignore this, this is if you did a double music box on the side here. Um, put the glue on there. Now, you pick up your base and don't push it right in. You have to eyeball it. You have to find where that thread is gonna go. You have to make sure that thread is lined up perfectly in the middle. So, you've got it in there, turn it upside down. Now, when you turn it upside down, make sure you didn't move it and let it set for an hour or two. Um, if, if it's the E6000 or a different kind of glue, you might have to let it set longer. The hot glue, an hour or two is probably fine, even less, but it's always safer to let it set longer. I haven't had many of them come apart. I mean, in all the years I've been doing this, I've stored music boxes for years in the, in the um, you know, storage and nothing's really come apart, but every once in a while one does. Okay, so then this is under there. Now in, on the top, you're gonna be putting, you're gonna be screwing this into the music box that's underneath, and that's all you're doing, you're just screwing it right in. Okay. There we go. Okay, and that's what makes the house turn. Okay. Now, I think that's the theme from the Adams Family, the funeral march. Okay. And all of this, the decorations that I gave you, you can put wherever you'd like. I used a little glue and I placed the leaves. Uh, once everything is dry and you have the disc on there, glue the house first. And then if you don't have the glue, you know, you can kind of slide the leaf. I was able to slide my leaf a little bit under and just glue them going around the broom I put here. I put a couple of the pumpkins around. And my bat fell off, but I had a bat here. You, could, you have two bats, so you can put them wherever you'd like to put them. Okay? I always try to get this to stop right in the center, but it doesn't want to do that all the time. Um, okay, so I will be putting this video up today on YouTube under painting a ceramic haunted house music box. It's kind of a long word, words, but I've always started them with painting a ceramic pickup truck, painting a ceramic birdhouse. So I want to do the same thing so that you all are aware of you know what to look for. I also want to show you what I'm planning for the holidays, after Halloween for the winter holidays. Um, you have you're going to have a choice of doing. Well, it's this house. It's a candy cane house, and you could either do it in the um, colors, or you can take an easy way out and do it in the blue. That's hard to see. Even. How's that? Okay. And I'll put the kits together and you will get all the lights. You will get all the colors, the snow, the glitter. And if you see on this one, I did snow sporadically around. On this one, we have it solid. Um, I have a little bit on the trees. I mean, it's your piece, so you can do whatever you want. So um, I'm pouring these. I'm not buying them. Like this house, I was able to 
buy it already in bisque, but these I'm pouring. So if you are interested, please get in touch with either me or um, Chris at the library and let her know that you want to do it and which one that you want to do. You want to do it in the colors or you want to do it in the blue. Um, the kits are going to be $25. I'm trying to keep all the kits at the same price. So, you know, some cost me a little more material, some cost me a little less, but I want it to be that it's the same price to all of you so you're used to this, okay? Um, it cost me a little bit more putting these kits together than coming to the library, but at least it's a way of staying in touch with all of you during this crazy time. It, it cost me more for the bags to put them in, for the, the cups, uh, to give you the paints, to give you brushes. Brushes are the most expensive, so please take care of your brushes really well, and especially when you wash your dry brush and brush. Don't smash it down. Don't ever smash any brushes down in a, in a bowl, okay? In the regular brushes, I swish them in the water, and work them back and forth, okay? And with these, I kind of put a little soap in them and work them on my hand back and forth. Of course, I just painted my hand. Um, okay, don't, don't smash your brushes down. I always try to pull them to a point or flat or whatever the original shape of the brush is. Try to keep that shape. Like I said, the dry brushing brushes, they wear out a lot faster. So take care of your brushes. They are expensive. And if you ever need any more, you just get in touch with me and I'll try to include it in the kit if you need a different size or anything. You know, it depends on what we're doing and um, how much the item is and you know what I can put together. But for now, this is next. Also, I did this. This is not going to be a YouTube class, but if anybody's interested, you can just tell Chris or email me and I could put a kit together for this. It will not be $25. I can do this one for, say, $20. Um, this could be a little bit less money. And... Um, He's cute, and uh, if you go on Pinterest, if you go on gare.com, G-A-R-E, you will, you will see, and also go on Facebook on gare, and you will see all of these gnomes done differently. You can do it for Halloween, you can do it for Christmas, you can do it for Easter. I've seen it with hearts on it for Valentine's Day. So it's a cute piece, and you would get the bell and the bow, and just let Chris or myself know if you're interested in this. Again, R-O-E-C-E-R -E -E at gmail.com. Um, when I show something, it always includes everything so you can finish the piece. There's only a few things I always ask you to have around, and that's just the water bowl, the palette, paper towels, and uh, this time a pencil. I didn't mention a pencil. If you want to seal the haunted house, uh, again, a paint-on sealer. Uh, I, I would do a matte, but if you like gloss, you could do a gloss paint-on sealer. You can use a Krylon spray. Um, but always spray outside, spray is toxic, so a lot of people do prefer the paint on. And I know Michaels probably carries it, and I know that Amazon carries Duncan paint on sealer. So if you would like anything like that, you know, you just um, get it and just, you know, put a thin coat on or take it outside and spray it. So again, that's it. I think that's all I have to say today. And thank you all so much for participating in these classes. I appreciate your business, and stay safe. Thank you.